My name is Peter Steele. I'm the resident manager steward of the Angelo Reserve here in Mendocino County. Because it's in the North Coast Range of California, it's uh, one of the wetter sites in the reserve system, and so it's uh, considered a temperate rainforest. So there's a lot of aquatic ecology that goes on here in the way of research because of the uh, number of streams we have. River flows upstream to downstream, but actually it's not a linear system. So it has like this three like branching system. So we call this main stem, and we call these branches tributaries. And main stem usually is wide river, and small branches are small little creeks. And those are connected, and many animals move between each other. So I'm interested in the food web interaction between the main stem and the tributaries of the river network. Algae that grow in the bottom of the river is the food source of everything. And insects, aquatic insects, eat those kind of food. And then other animals like fish and frogs eat those kind of insects. So they are all connected. For me, I tend to be very excited about what I see. So for example, I found so many mayflies flying in the same place. And it was amazing. That one kind of mayfly, ephemera maculata, grow up in the main stem, productive main stem eating plenty algae there. But after they grow, they emerge from the main stem and fly to these tributaries and then reproduce, lay their eggs and then die. And the babies hatch in that creek and then they drift down to the main stem again. So their life cycle is like migratory between the main stem and the tributaries. They're in the water as part of their life cycle and then they emerge. And the ones that she's studying emerge and jump into the riffle, and then all the fish eat the adult ones. Here's a caddisfly. It's a similar insect. This one weaves a shell. So there's a little fly in here who makes his case out of shells, the caddisfly, and then emerges as an adult in the evening and then lays its eggs and dive bombs into the water. It's all about food supply. It's all about water. Okay, so the environment isn't, isn't reacting to the life forms. The life forms are reacting to the environment. So as this area potentially gets hotter, more dry years and maybe more wet years at other times, the strong, clear signature of climate change is warming in the winter. And that, here in North America, that's probably the biggest change. Hiromi's main project, the reason why we have these on all along the eel, is that we want to see if temperature makes any difference in mayfly emergence. A lot of insects actually have a stage of their lives where they're aquatic as nymphs, and so they're in the water right now. And then when they're emerging, the idea is to collect them up here in the sticky traps and then be able to identify them later and figure out what's actually present here. The mesh has holes that basically allow insects smaller than a mosquito to come out of. And so what we are trying to look at is to count how many small insects are actually emerging. This is like a handheld manual vacuum to suck up small insects into a vial. There's mosquitoes, midges, some really small mayflies, crane fly. Caught one crane fly today. This is like a potpourri of everything. This is the most downstream site we have. The water temperature is definitely warmer than upstream. And so I have seen her mayflies emerge in this net a lot earlier than the ones upstream. And that is very important for the species interaction because there are fish both in the main stem and the tributaries. But fish in the tributaries are very hungry usually because tributary is shaded and Algae don't grow much because of the limitation of the light, but because mayflies migrate from main stem to the tributaries, is that they carry a lot of resources from the productive main stem to the tributaries. We found the nematodes a couple of years ago just by collecting a bunch of mayfly adults as they were flying. We just collected them and put them in water and saw that these worm-like creatures emerged. There are these roundworms that infect the mayflies and are in really high prevalence. So we've been tracking the mayflies that Hiromi studies and seeing how many of them are infected by nematodes. It's kind of, it is like a sub-project of Hiromi's because she's focusing on mayflies and how mayflies are related to fish and 
spiders and other creatures that live in this general watershed. And I'm looking at the parasite because they completely sterile the mayflies. So normally female mayflies carry around 500 to 800 eggs, but when they're infected by these parasitic nematodes, they have absolutely no eggs. So this high level of infection in the mayfly population has big implications for like the next generation if a lot of them can't reproduce at all. So they infect these mayflies when the mayflies are still small as nymphs underwater. Then when the mayflies emerge and oviposit, the mayflies drown and the nematodes emerge from the mayflies at that point and are free living. And so I have now collected a bunch of nymphs here and all of the mayflies have either emerged or died. And so I'm trying to see whether there are nematodes in the bottom, which would suggest like some level of infection in the buckets here amongst these mayflies. Mayflies are a huge source of the fish diet and the part of the fish diet in the summer. And without them, um, they don't grow as much. And she's shown in a couple of different ex feeding experiments these last couple of years here. So <laughs> we want to know how much food resources available for these different fish because that affects their growth rates in the summer. So these are invertebrate samples that I took in the creek to understand what the food resources are like for the fish in the different pools. And it also helps us understand what they're eating. Mm -hmm. So this is a this is a caddis fly. And then here's another little mayfly. Mayflies are like this is the prime chow. But if there are more of these really yummy, delicious mayflies in the stream, then there's more food resources and there's more opportunities for them to grow. And because of that mayfly subsidy, fish in the tributaries are kept happy. Their stomach is full of mayfly, dead mayflies. They have been making them slow up, but we see so many mayflies in their stomach. So actually, fish in the tributaries are supported by not only the insects around the creeks, but also the productivity in the mainstem that look far from each other. <laughs>